بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد. as the final part of our series, which is a series of lectures about the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم and the foundation of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah, which is the companions of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم رضي الله تعالى عنهم أجمعين. and the last portion we began to speak in reference to the Shia creed and how they differ, the Rafida and the Imamiya and some of the other sects of Shiite groups and how they differ with the usul and foundation of Islam and going and referencing some of their books and their most respected book as we mentioned Al-Kafi there's a title, uh, a, a chapter entitled the Imams alayhim salam no knowledge of the past and the future and that nothing escapes them and this was in volume number one page 261 so here that they claim in one of their mo the most famous and important books in Shia uh, theology they have a chapter entitled that their imams and then they say alayhim salam this is the kind of uh, manners we show with the prophets alayhim after salatu wa salam but they refer to their imams as, and, and supplicate for them saying uh, may Allah you know alayhim uh, salam may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon them and they claim that their imams have knowledge of the unseen when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, mentions in the Quran and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also showed us that he did not have knowledge of the unseen only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows when the hour will be only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala meaning the day of judgment the day that it will happen only Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows when creation began and when creation will end and when you will die as an individual and when your children will be born or if and when you will have children this knowledge is with Allah this knowledge is never with a scholar this knowledge is never with a marid this knowledge is never with a sheikh. This knowledge is never with an imam or any other individual. Anyone who says this and claims this knowledge, then they have, uh, exact. They have basically have one of the nawaqib uh, al-Islam. They have uh, verified that they have left the fold of Islam because they are claiming knowledge that only Allah subhanahu wa taala has as knowledge. So another deviant aspect of the creed of the Rafida is that they view Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu as being infallible. And some of their sects view him radiallahu ta'ala anhu as being a part of Allah or sharing in rububiyyah or the lordship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And amongst the countless fabricated uh, narrations they attribute to the companions to substantiate their creed are narrations, narrations such as what is found in their book Basai al-Darajat on page 81 where they accuse Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu of saying I am the eye of Allah I am the hand of Allah and I am the side of Allah and the door of Allah in another narration as collected in Ilm al-Yaqeen by Abdullah al-Shabr he narrates on Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhu and as our, uh, our Shaykh Shaykh Ibrahim Ibn Amr al-Rahayli hafadullah ta'ala mentions in his book he says, and he is free from such statements, meaning uh, 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 Ibn Abbas, radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And they narrate, this Abdullah al-Shabr says in his book, Al-Mal Yaqeen, he says that Ibn Abbas, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, says, Verily, Allah the Almighty on the day of judgment will appoint Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as the one who takes account of the prophets. And Ali, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, as the one who takes account of all creation meaning all the creation that includes the prophets alayhim after salatu salam because they were created by Allah that they will all have to be taken to account uh, before Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu ajma'in uh, radiallahu ta'ala anhu and this is uh, shirk this is as if Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu shares in the lordship with Allah 
Even the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or the angels, they don't share in Allah's lordship. Allah is one. He's the only one who's worthy of worship. And he is, he is not begotten, nor was he begotten, and there is none like unto him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. There are countless quotes, statements, lectures, and volumes of books devoted to accusing the companions, radiallahu ta'ala, uh, uh, of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and the companions of the Prophet ﷺ of apostasy, meaning making takfir of the companions. This is another pillar of their creed, a foundation of their belief. Uh, and to illustrate this point, it will suffice us just one narr narration from Muhammad Bakr al-Majlisi, uh, al 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 which he states in his book. He says, our creed regarding distancing ourselves is that we free ourselves from the four idols and idols I translated the word idols from the word in Arabic which means sanam or asnam which refers to idols those things worship besides Allah like statues and so forth here he referred he said we distance ourselves from the four idols he says Abu Bakr Omar Uthman and Muawiyah radiallahu ta'anu majma'in and they're free from the evil tongue of this uh heretic and then he goes on to say and the four women Aisha Hafsa Hind and Um Hakam and from all of their disciples and followers meaning they distance themselves from from those individuals those Sahaba and their companions and followers and he said and they are the evilest of Allah's creation on earth and that faith is not completed in Allah and his messenger and the Imams except after freeing oneself from their enemies and this is in his book called Haq al yaqeen and it's on page 519 so this shows you that they rank their Imams up with the Lordship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they also hold Ali anhu, as infallible and as a Lord with Allah sometimes in place of Allah sometimes with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and and so forth they also make takfir and hate the companions of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi especially those most beloved to him, Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, radiallahu ta'ala majma'in, and his beloved wife Aisha, radiallahu ta'ala anha. They say that she's a, a an adulteress. They curse her. They have parties and celebrations uh, of mixed gatherings of men and women dancing and singing. You can find it all over the YouTube. You can find it all over. Uh, it, it's well known they have these celebrations they laugh they dance they a, encourage their children they brainwash their children to believe and say these evil things and these evil chants that often have uh, all kind of wickedness in them they make takfir of the companions of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam they accuse Aisha radiallahu of zina of adultery and fornication and they celebrate and rejoice in their death. So is there any disbelief after disbelief? So reflect, beloved Muslims, on the creed of this sect or of this religion and understand the Jews and the Christians and Buddhists respect your faith, respect your religion more than these people. Ask yourself and question the person who says the Shia are our brothers. Or they are really nice people and question the intelligence and intellect of the person who leaves the disbelief of Christianity or of any other faith to embrace the heresy of the wrath of the Shia Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah uh, rahimahullah ta'ala states about the wrath of the Shia he says Allah knows best Allah's knowledge is sufficient he said there is no there is not a group more evil than them from amongst all the, all the sects associated with Islam, with innovation and misguidance, nor more ignorant or lying, nor oppressive, nor closer to disbelief, wickedness and sin, nor further than true Iman, meaning true faith, than them. And he said this in his classical book called Minhaj as Sunnah, Volume 5, page 160. And I ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and bless Ahlul Islam wherever they may be and protect us from the harm and the tongues and the the swords of the Rafida. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them to be Ghanima of, for the Muslims. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Nabi and Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.